We've only got three IndyCar races left this season, and with Alex Pillow doing decently well, while Joseph Newgarden does f*** all, this championship's looking pretty safe for the Spaniard here, who'll need that prize money to find lawyers high enough to unravel his latest contract saga. As the series headed to St. Louis, however, all eyes were on Newgarden, the American cleaning up around the ovals in 2023, and set on claiming victory at the last one at Gateway. Hey there guys, I'm Will. Welcome to FP1 and the comedy review, and I'll tell you now, that's not quite what happened. Before we get into the action, let's cover the news, or whatever's going on at Maya Shank Racing, since that's basically all this segment seems to be nowadays. Simon Pagano was out yet again, and we got confirmation after the weekend that the Frenchman will be sat on the sidelines for the rest of the year. Linus Tech Tips was back to fill in once again, with Tom Blomquist inheriting his ride early for the remaining two rounds of the season after this. That's not the end of the driver transfer saga, however, as Sydney's season was kicking off early at Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. Let's be honest, Jack Harvey hasn't had much of a mention in this series, and that's because whilst he's not been making a name for himself, like some people in this field, that's not to mean he's been particularly quick either. In fact, a commenter the other day referred to him as Back of the Pack Jack. <laughs> I can't lie, I've gutted the money learning of that nickname now. Back of the Pack Jack would see his IndyCar deal terminated prior to the race at Gateway, with RLL aiming to sign someone a little faster to close out the season. Can someone explain why they've settled on Connor Daly then? He would make his debut for his third team in 2023, as IndyCar geared up for practice then immediately gave up, with the track looking more like a swimming pool thanks to the weather. With it being too dangerous to send Benjamin Peterson anywhere near the circuit in these conditions, we had to wait nine hours before everyone was able to test the waters. And this would be a rather important practice session, with IndyCar using the red sidewall tyres on an oval for the first time. That didn't lead to as much chaos as you might have expected throughout practice though, well, apart from this, but we'll get there soon enough. Graham Rahal wasn't having the most fun of times as he complained something felt wrong with his number 15 car. Maybe back of the pack Jack shit in it or something. Colton Herter and Takuma Sato had near-death experiences as well, and how both of these guys kept out the wall here, I have no idea. Besides that though, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about, to the point where the commentators had moved on from their grass fetish at Indy the other week to discussing the font on Will Power's steering wheel. Maybe Power was being distracted by this too, as when he saw a rogue Scott McLaughlin too late, he piled into the outside wall. Power then slid down the track into the path of Marcus Ericsson. The Swede had just agreed to leave Ganassi for a drive at Andretti next year, and gave his husky chocolate car an app send-off as he drove into the side of the damaged Penske. With no spare chassis, Ericsson's team had to put together an almost Frankenstein car for the remainder of the weekend. That must have scared the rest of the field, as it now looked as if Alex Pillow had multiplied. I've now got that, now there are two of them Star Wars seen in my head, but we'll have to leave the obvious racist stereotypes for another day, I think. Let's get into qualifying then, where Daly shocked the field by momentarily going P1. This looks great, though then you have to look at the drivers he's ahead of at this stage. Friend of the show, David Malukas, was in his happy place once again, and displaced Daly for P1 a little later on. It would be the number three car of Scott McLaughlin, however, who ended up setting the fastest lap average and lining up on pole position for the race. It looked like no one would stop the 33s. Well, apart from penalties, and he wasn't the only one. Scott would be amongst six cars penalised for engine changes coming into this round, and thus the pole sitter would actually start 10th and promote championship hopeful, or more like dreamer at this stage, Joseph Newgarden, to the P1 spot. As we gear up for the race then, this is my time to throw in a shameless plug about 67% of you not being subscribed. So if that's you, what the f*** are you playing at? <laughs> Sorry, that was too harsh. Generally though, if you're enjoying the video, I'm trying to get as close to 100k as I can before the end of the year, so clicking on that subscribe button down below would really come in handy. Right, now onto the race. With this being an oval, that meant Ed Carpenter was back in the field, and as the green light waved, it became clear he had been paying attention. His first point of call being to remove Benjamin Peterson from the running. With his loyal sacrifice made and the rest of the field feeling a lot more comfortable with the 55 car on the sidelines, we went green again, Newgarden holding the fort out front as Maluka slotted up to third. Linus Tech Tips was also on the move, well, trying to be on the move at least, an attempt on power to 
turned into a failed defence against championship leader Palo. But once again, hats off to Lundqvist for getting into the top 10 on his first oval to begin with. Further back, things weren't going so swimmingly for Takuma Sato, who was stuck in Sunday drive mode as he seemed to let the entire field by on lap 55. We were entering the first round of stops around now, and it will be no surprise to tell you that the first to chew through his tyres was Colton Herta. This undercut paid off, however, as the 26 was able to cycle back up to second place. Newgarden, meanwhile, was locked in an intense fight with Patawo Ward for the top positions, with the Penske man just able to fend off his rival, for the time being at least. You see, Pato was relentless, until Ed Carpenter decided he wanted to be a menace again and shut the door on the McLaren driver on lap 111. Thanks to Ed wiping out Peterson, though, we wouldn't see another caution until lap 123. Takuma Sato had been playing with fire all weekend, though this time he bit off more than he could chew as he got into the marbles and decided, eh, let's just hit the wall. At this stage, Scott Dixon was in the lead, and he would pit under the yellow along with Newgarden. Ericsson was also in, but found out Indy cars can be a little hard to control when you only have three wheels on the car. The chaos on pit road didn't stop there, as Augustine Canapino got his five seconds of fame when he nearly ran over one of David Malukas' mechanics. The mechanic in question responding by just kicking the Argentinian's car. We get going again, with Dixon driving off into the distance as Newgarden and O'Ward went back to killing each other. Malukas then made a great move on the outside of McLaughlin, which, as we know, even champions like Will Power can struggle to do. Strategy was now coming into its own, with half the field aiming for two more stops till the end of the race, and the other trying to sip at their fuel like some stereotypical British person sips their tea. That's completely bullshit, by the way. Anyway, one of these drivers was leader Scott Dixon, and the master of fuel saving was going to have to once again pull out all the stops if he wanted to take his second win on the year. He finally came into the pits with just 64 laps left to run, and his call seemed to pay off when he managed to lap Roman Grosjean, who was about as present in the action of this race as his Andretti contract is for next year. Things really weren't looking good for Newgarden then, and maybe the Americans saw this too, as with 49 to go, he admitted defeat on the championship and ended his title hopes by crashing into the barrier. That all paved the way for Scott Dixon to take a comfortable second victory in a row, throwing himself back in as an unexpected upset in this title race. That said, Pelot would need to do something monumentally stupid for this to actually happen. Still, the old veteran still got it lapping the whole field besides O'Ward and Malukas, who made up the podium. A pretty fun race then, and if you enjoyed my review, like I said, I'm aiming for that 100k mark, so help me get a little bit further to that by subscribing down below and pressing some of the other buttons down there while you're at it. A big thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well, and if you'd like early access to some of my content, then you can support me further over there using the links in the description. For now though, that's all from me, so I'll see you very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.